this time I'd like to call to order the Monday, June 17, 2013 meeting of the Curry Tuck County Board of Commissioners to order. At 5.30, we had a work session with the Building Inspections Department. At 6.30, we had a work session to discuss an amendment, an amendment to the Beach Driving Ordinance. At this time, I'd like to call on Reverend Glenn McCraney, a retired Navy chaplain, and also from uh, Mount Zion United Methodist Church and various other uh, <laughs> entities over his career to please lead us in our invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. And let us pray. Dear God, grant your divine wisdom upon our county commissioners as they meet tonight. Instill with them holy hearts with a holy purpose and with visions of service to the people of Currituck. May they feel the deep responsibilities of their elected offices. And like their hearts and minds that they may behold the ever dawning of a bright new future for our beloved Currituck County. As residents of this historical district, may we be a grateful people seeking to serve rather than only being served. May we celebrate the rich gifts of life, of freedom, and of liberty which has been bestowed upon us by the sacrifice of others. May we pass on to future generations the ri these riches and many blessings which we have received. Guide us when we do not know the, which way to turn, and let us live and cherish your daily mercies and blessings which you have bestowed upon us. For these things we pray, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor McCraney. At this time, we have our uh, approval of agenda. I need to add item under new business, item 4A, appointment to the Board of Adjustments. Have a motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Uh, next item is public comment. We have three people signed up. Our first one is Mr. Peter Thornton. Ask you to please come to the podium and restate your name and address for the uh, record, sir. My name is Peter M. Thornton, Sr. I live here in Moyak. Uh, I'm here to, for a safety center near the middle school, open land, Nightingale Pad, emergency service emergency safety center, a park and ride for all, a new firehouse for safety, new equipment, move the library so it can be found, a recreation center with a pool, a rail for hurricane evacuation, emergency ranch land, uh, exit, two exits for ranch land so you can get out of ranch land because of the trains, the 120 cars go across these tracks down here. You ain't getting out of ranch land. The, the other thing is uh, the trains can be used if they, if they put these trains in over here. They can be used for a care center on, on Volvo Parkway in Chesapeake. There's a hospital, a Centera Hospital. If we have a disaster here, we can load them on a train and we can bring them up right up there, right up to a hospital. A dialysis center, which can be used as an emergency center. Emergency exit for Eagle Creek. Eagle Creek is only going one way out, and them roads are bad, and them roads are bad, and they need a second exit to get out of there. A rail, the rail also can be used as a scenic route for Moyak and can be used as an evacuation route. Now, we don't need this to happen that happened up in Chesapeake. This road they were supposed to put in, if you ever did any volunteer work, it's hard to take a person out that has been burnt. It's really, really hard. 
And this is what it says. Delayed work can hinder rescues. So we need to do something to be safe. And a park and ride, it works very good. I don't know how it worked down here. But we're using the park and ride right now at Foodland. And thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Ms. Mary Etheridge. Also, ask you to give your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. My name is Mary Etheridge, and I live at 846 Shawborough Road. My family and I have been involved in litigations with Curry Tuck County over illegal spot zoning since 2011. At that time, Mr. Griggs and Mr. McCord were not serving on the board, and Mr. Martin was the only commissioner voting against allowing a junkyard to be located in our neighborhood. The courts have since ruled in our favor, saying indeed it was illegal spot zoning. But this will not be a victory until our family makes sure this never happens to another citizen of Curry Tuck County. One of the founding fathers of the United States, Samuel Adams, stated, among the natural rights of the people are these. First, a right to life. Second, a right to liberty. And thirdly, to property, together with the right to defend them in the best manner that we can. On December the 5th, 2011, Commissioner Owen Etheridge made a motion to approve a 1.1 acre of land in the Shawburg community to be rezoned. The motion was seconded by now Chairman O'Neill. Motion was carried with only Mr. Martin voting against the motion. At that meeting, Commissioner Etheridge stated, and I quote, in regards to mentioning that I have property, my family does own a lot that is, well, we'll say to the southwest corner of the blue area. There has been no discussion whatsoever about this lot or land. Quoting from an email from Commissioner Etheridge dated Thursday, November the 10th, 2011, at 7.02 to the county manager, the commissioners, the clerk to the board, and a copy to Peter Bishop. Last but not least, there might be an opportunity to accommodate some of the contra contractors who will build the Mid-County Bridge, those who will need to offload rail cars and assemble materials that are vitally important to the construction of the bridge, resulting in possible job creations, help the contractors achieve the greatest economics of scale, thus hopefully getting the bridge built. Is the county going to take the same position it has now if these requests do come forward? Recently, you, Peter Bishop, and several of the commissioners attended a joint meeting at COA with representatives from the Port of Virginia the company that owns the rail, and the Northeast Economic Development C Commission, end quote. Again, dated November the 10th, 2011, before the December 5th, 2011 meeting. Email from Chairman Paul O'Neill to Owen Etheridge, commissioners, county manager, clerk to the board, copy to the economic director, Peter Bishop, and the county attorney. Uh, dated November the 12th, 2011, and I quote, while this is still in rezoning, can the economic development director or his advisory board com comment on this, end quote. Email from Owen Etheridge to Chairman O'Neill and copy to the same people dated the same day, and I quote, Paul, I suggest to Clay he do, what, he do just that and I think he has spoken to Peter about doing what you have suggested, Owen, end quote. Again, dated before the December the 5th, 2011 meeting. Yes, we want this to be over. We want the citizens of Curry Tuck County to know that if government does something wrong, that you should not have to pay for their mistakes. This is why we're continuing to fight. This is not a battle that at my age I wish to be in, 
but I do know that I have a moral obligation to try and prevent this terrible ordeal from ever happening to any other citizens of our county. At my age, I've already fought too many battles, from my husband having melanoma to two years ago, me having breast cancer. Our battle with the county has been both a mental and a financial fight, but I will continue to fight because, again, quoting Samuel Adams, it does not require a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority keen to setting bushfires in people's minds. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Etheridge. Uh, Mr. McCree, I have a question. Yes. Is there anything improper with asking if something can go before the Economic Development Board for consideration? Certainly not, and uh, certainly, uh, I guess in, in, in a broader answer, there is nothing wrong in a legislative matter, which a rezoning is, uh, for commissioners to speak with one another, to speak with any citizen or interested person, uh, either in favor of the rezoning or against the rezoning about, about that issue. It's certainly entirely uh, <coughs> appropriate and very common. Um, as, as we know, though, if it were a quasi-judicial matter, which this was not, it would not be appropriate to have what's called ex parte or extra communication outside the hearing room, but that certainly, again, was not the case here. Uh, and so the, the email, any emails or telephonic or verbal uh, communication or discussion with others is entirely appropriate and, and a regular practice throughout the state. Thank you. Well, one last clarification. Did we not lose the litigation? Uh, the, the court did rule that uh, the rezoning was uh, illegal spot zoning and overturned the rezoning requiring the county to return the zoning designation back to its original agricultural uh, zone. Uh, the court further denied uh, the award of attorney fees to the plaintiffs. Uh, the plaintiffs have now chosen to appeal the denial of, of uh, attorney fees uh, to the Court of Appeals and the county is also uh, appealing the determination by the lower court that it was an illegal spot zoning. So we, we will ultimately hear from the Court of Appeals <coughs> as to whether, first of all, that was illegal spot zoning and secondly, whether the county will be required to pay any attorney fees. But the county did not take, did initiate any uh, appeal of this? Uh, not, not, not until the plaintiffs chose to appeal. Okay. And, and so the county then has, has filed a cross appeal. Okay, thank you. Next, we have Gary Smith. I ask you also to state your name and address for the record, please. I'm um, Gary Michael Smith, 1123 Care Tank Road, uh, Corolla, North Carolina, 27927. Yeah. Um, gentlemen, I just, um, uh, and I apologize, it's my fault for not figuring out that the work session I should have been here for was at 6.30, and so uh, uh, if I can just make a couple comments specific to the driving ordinance. Also, just want to make one very quick comment. Um, last night, uh, under the contract that I have with Kirkuk, Kirkuk Town of Corolla Clean Beaches, you know, we cleaned the beaches twice. I just want to relay, um, I was stopped two times on the beach by tourists who were very happy that we're making an attempt to keep our beaches clean. But they come up to me and they ask me, I have my mom and dad, they're in a wheelchair back in the cottage. Is there anywhere in Corolla there's a handicap access? So I'm just a messenger for all the people that I see on the beach. If we can please put on the agenda for 2014 handicap access ramps, I think this would be, from a public relations point of view, just a huge achievement and something Curto County could be very proud about. Um, not knowing what was discussed in the last half hour, I'll, I'll make a couple comments, and I hope none of them are out of place. And um, one, um, I am very much for a driving ordinance that clarifies who and who can't drive and defining safe regulations. I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement. I com I've communicated with uh, Sylvia Wolf quite a bit. Butch and I had a conversation last week on the phone. So I, I am for clarity on this and, and very much want to work with everybody. Um, just a couple of comments. Um, one, I would like to ask for a review of the hours that you're driving on the beach. I was driving last night under contract for Currituck County. From 7 till 8 o'clock at night is a very dangerous time to be on the beach. The sun's setting, all the families have finished their dinners, they're back out on the beach, it's starting to get dark, and at that, at that time there should not be vehicles on the beach. 
you need to review your hours. Uh, I know the ruling that you're consider con concurrently doing is from 6 in the 8 in the morning to 6 in the 8 at night. I highly recommend shadowing Corolla Ocean Rescue's hours. If it's good for the lifeguards, it should be good for those of us that are, I'm sorry, servicing the beach. Um, I would recommend um, 6 till 9.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock, and cut off at 7 at night for safety reasons. I think that's an issue. Um, the other I wrote, uh, uh, Commissioner O'Neill wrote a little email last week. Um, trucks are very evasive. They're big. Um, I know the tourists don't like them. I know the locals don't like them. ATVs are the vehicle of choice by uh, Crawl Ocean Rescue, by the Sheriff's Department, a lot less evasive, much more safer, and they're a way for vendors like myself who need to have access to the beach um, to, um, uh, to get there. So when you're making your decision on who's allowed on the beach and what type of vehicles, factor in that ATVs are, are a very safe, al safe alternative and a lot less evasive. So just put that into the equation. Um, and um, what was I? I had one other comment to make. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd just like to comment that we are moving very slow and deliberative because there's issues ab abounding about how much you open it when you open it and, and so many who and so we are moving deliberative to make sure we don't um, have to go back and redo it the next week. I, I, I appreciate that I, and I know it's it's a, it's it's sticky and and, and I, I share I share your guys effort in that um, it's it's a balance between as Butch and I were talking making the locals happy so they don't you know every time somebody drives up and down the beach somebody gets a call about that I get that part uh, at the same time, the vendors that use the beach are everywhere from, from wedding providers, carpenters, um, uh, uh, you know, beach cleanup services, um, numerous um, beach and umbrella services. Um, my my Corolla Surf Shop Corporation, we give over 2,000 lessons a year, uh, and that's a huge source of income for like a higher number of people to do that. Um, and having a safe way that we're allowed to get our people off the beach and all, I mean all on the beach and off the beach and our equipment and everything having an open-minded way so we can make both parties happy I, I know that's a challenge and I respect what you what uh, ladies and gentlemen what you have to go through to reach that point so anyway, anyway. yes yeah. sir question yeah <clears throat> understand everything you say mm -hmm. just a question what do you do when you get 50 vendors who want to do the same thing then how, how do you, how, what's you, your suggestion on how do you do you uh, just the same um, approach that you do for the northern beaches you only cut so many permits a year don't, don't do 50 permits Mr. Smith I would just ask the uh, comments that you sent me by email that you forward them to the manager so he can distribute to the rest of the commissioners <clears throat> if okay. that's okay with you uh, Dan and I I talk to Dan 10 times a day Okay. I'm his favorite caller. <laughs> well, that's why we can't ever get him on the phone. Now yeah. we know why. <laughs> He's always talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> and also just an invite, any of you are welcome to come and spend a day in Kerala. I'll take you through the lessons. I'll take you through beach cleanup. I'll take you through what we do to make a living on the beach. Welcome. Just wear your bathing suit, T-shirt, flip-flops, and I think it'll be a, it's, it's an experience I want you to have. Butch, uh, Mr. Petrie. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'd just like to know how the beach cleanup is going. I guess you're doing it twice twice a week, I guess Sundays and Tuesdays. How's that going? Yes, sir. Under our con under the contract, um, uh, right now we're cleaning. We have The contract allows us a little bit of a window. For example, we had thunderstorms today. So yesterday I cleaned from Albacore all the way down to the, to the county line at Dare. Um, I tagged about 40 tents. Um, uh, in that process, um, uh, when I made my return trip back late in the evening, um, um, most of the tents were up. You could the people. I think the word is slowly getting out. In essence, I'm, when they see me go down, they as I'm 
going off heading south, you can see them running out and taking their stuff back. So the yellow tags are working. Uh, there, there's some good news. Right. It, it is, it's like you get a warning on your car. If you don't move your car quickly, you're going to get a parking ticket. That, there's some good, the good news there. Um, the, um, when we make the second run on Wednesday, I'm probably going to have to do part of it in the truck because I'm sensing there's probably two or th three of those tents that are abandoned. Um, uh, most of our, our real ugly cleanup happened in the month of May. We, cl we filled two dumpsters with 60 feet by, what is it, 60 by 10 by 10, so 6,000 cubic square feet of debris we pulled off the beach. N now it's more of a policing action, and then when they don't do it, then we, then we take the stuff up. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Smith. It, okay. One other thing I wanted to oh, yes, sir. He, he mentioned about handy camp ramp. I have been in conversation with Mr. Scanlon about just that mm -hmm. and what we do have available and what kind of reasonable accommodations that can be made. So that's in discussion. Okay. Yeah. I had the one, um, the one handicap wrap that's just an excellent example. If you have a chance to go check Jeanette's Pier, that is a tremendous, and I, and I know that's rather big, and we we may not have the funds to do that. But as far as the the functionality of a ramp and how it works, if you if you ever down that way, just check the handicap ramp at Jeanette's Pier. It's a good example. So, you know, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, next is public hearings. Uh, the first one is item A. Consideration and action of PB 07 08 Dennis Anderson Muddy Motor Sports Park request for renewal of a use permit for a privately owned outdoor recreation facility located at uh, 5243 Caratoke Highway, tax map 83, partial 6A, Poplar Branch Township. Does this require swearing in? Uh, Put your left hand and raise your right. I'm not used to this. <laughs> <laughs> that means you've never been in trouble. That's right. Uh, you swear to tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but truth, so help you God. I do. Thank you. Mr. Woody. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a use permit for the uh, Muddy Motorsports Park uh, in Lower Curry Tuck. It is an outdoor recreation use permit. It was originally issued in 2007. Um, actually originally it was issued in 2007 for one year but then they came back and had the permit uh, extended to a three-year permit so in 2007 it was issued for three years for this for this operation um, and I don't think they actually did the operation in 2007 and then in 2010 it came back before the board and a renewal re renewal was issued for three additional years and so you can do the math and you see here we are again for a third time um, I will note, and I think Mr. Anderson will probably note this as well, but in his request for the renewal, um, he is asking for the permit uh, to not be required to have the three-year renewal anymore and just run with the land, basically, just be a non-renewable permit. I think he's going to probably cover that in his presentation. But what I want to do real quickly before um, I conclude my presentation is just go through the staff comments that were we, we sent this for comments by the Technical <coughs> Review Committee. Uh, planning staff's comment is that the... Um, when the events are held on the property that a special event permit be applied for and issued. Um, that doesn't have to necessarily be a special event permit for each individual event. When people have recurring events, we'll allow them to come into the first part of the season, apply for the permit, and then just let that work for the whole season. Need to make sure that's happening moving forward. Um, the purpose of the special event permit is, is not just to make you get a permit. It's also to uh, allow the EMS staff, the uh, the fire marshal, the building inspector, uh, the sheriff's office, allow the health department, these groups get a chance to see these special events. Uh, they ask them questions related to how they may need to respond to an emergency at the event, and that allows them to kind of program their staff resources for these events. So again, the special event permit is a means for service providing departments to be able to know and respond to these types of events, especially if you have two or three of these on the same weekend. Uh, Sheriff Johnson also had a comment right now. Uh, Mr. Anderson provides two uh, law enforcement officers, which he contracts uh, with the Sheriff's Office to do. She's requesting that moving forward there be a minimum of four law enforcement officers, and she's asked that to be included in the permit. So that's an increase from two to four. Uh, the Chief Building Inspector made a comment that there is a structure on the site that was constructed without a building permit. 
that that structure needs to be permitted. And I don't know if it can be permitted, but uh, but moving forward, any structures that are built need to have proper building permits before being constructed and occupied. Um, and then the fire marshal has also made some comments, and his comments uh, date back to 2010. Uh, he's asking for a public safety plan. Now, that's kind of similar to our special event permit, but I think what's important is is they want to have a, a, an agreement with Mr. Anderson um, that addresses such items as emergency vehicle ingress and egress, fire protection, emergency medical services, public assembly areas, uh, how attendees are directed in, in, inside the uh, event, uh, food concession distribution, and then this a agreement on how law enforcement and EMS services are provided. So I think that the uh, the fire marshal is looking for a more formalized agreement between the service providers and Mr. Anderson. That would be in addition to or could be in conjunction with the special event permit. Mr. Woody. Yes, sir. Does our UDO require that? Our UDO, our UDO does not require that. Does the state fire code require that? Yes. The state fire code requires a public safety plan. <clears throat> that needs to be incorporated with the special use, uh, the special event, instead of having to do two different. I, I understand, and that probably makes sense. Plans. I, I agree. Right, and, and there is a plan. I mean, there is a, I have a site plan with all the parking, all the, you know, exits and entrance ways. Um, we've got a you know the place for the helicopter to land, all of that, and Miss Flowers has got that. She's the one that I deal with on all of her safety, you know. And James Mims doesn't have a copy of it still, I guess. And I thought the last time we had a meeting that maybe he got it. I wasn't sure, but we did, and I because I, I, I paid Kevin to come out and to engineer it. You know what I mean, as far as to scale and do a drawing, and um, I paid him like 750 bucks to go around the parking lot. So I could give it to James so that we'd make sure that we were, you know, on the up and up. So I don't know why we're, you know, we're talking about it again, but I can check with Stephanie and Dawn and make sure that, you know, everybody gets a copy of it. So you guys will have it. Maybe I can get them to shoot it to you in an email form so everybody can see that we, it's been done. We don't need it. And just get it to him as part of the special <clears throat> event. Right. Okay. And, All right, continue. And then last, last, and there's a couple other comments uh, from James about uh, tent permits, fireworks, car permits, et cetera, pretty typical stuff. Um, last set of comments from a, a review agency was the health department, and they just mentioned <clears throat> having, having an adequate number of port johns which I'm not sure what that number is, but they said have an adequate number. Um, and then also mentioned that any food vendors on the property need to be approved by the local health department. Um, again, I don't have specifics on that from the health department, but they said that, that that needs to occur and that apparently you can get one packet under which all the food vendors can be approved. So maybe that's something also right. that can be done. Again, well, well they, they do an inspection every time. You know, every event that I have there, we don't – there's no skating around the uh, gate about that. You know what I mean? I've got outside vendors that come in. Barbecue Bob's has been there from the beginning. Black Pelican, those guys come in. They're all certified there that and it's up to them to go down to you know to the health department they come in and inspect mm -hmm. all of their potable water everything that they do so that as far as i know that's on the up and up you know so there shouldn't be any issue there i mean maybe somebody's making a comment to make sure that we keep on keeping on but it, it's definitely <clears throat> we definitely been doing that right and, and I th that may be the context of the health department comments so. yeah and that, that concludes the uh, comments from the staff, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Staff Thank. and review is recommending renewal of this permit in perpetuity? Per, per, that, that's, I mean, that's fine with us. I mean, the comments that are in here need to be addressed, but, but practically speaking, and I, and I have this position on most of our permits, if, if there's a violation or something's not right, then we would just bring the permit back before you for revocation. Right. So the three years, but I will I will say moving forward that the comments that are in this, particularly getting the special event permits for each year, kind of coming in and doing that, it needs to occur moving forward, and then the structures that need permits need to be permitted. Right. So I would note that we need to work together to get these comments addressed. Yeah, and the and the structure they're talking about is the tar paper shack saloon that we done mm -hmm. for the carnival, and it was a one shot deal. It was some big you know crazy idea that I came up with. It's, we usually have the beer garden, and instead of setting up a tent, we built this pallet house out of pine trees and pallets, and we had people serving beer out of it, and it, um, 
it actually is pretty cool and it worked really good. And so now I guess we see that if we want to keep it on the property, I don't even know how to get a permit for that. I mean, what do you do? I mean, how? I, I mean, don't know that you could. But. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, we can do that. I keep a fire truck by it, but it's, you know, wind load and all of that. I just, I've been thinking about an airboat and blowing it against it 70 mile an hour winds and see how good that is. But anyhow, I would, um, I would like to talk to someone so we could continue with the Tar Paper Shack Saloon. We wanted it for the future for bike week. We wanted to name something on the Outer Banks that's special. You know, you go to Daytona Beach and they got, you know, Crazy Horse Saloon and Iron Horse Saloons and all of that stuff. And I know a lot of people don't approve of that, but let me tell you, that's what the folks want and that's how it goes down. I go to a lot of those entertaining places. So I was just trying to put a little mark here and if we can make it work, we'll, I'll, we'll go through Spence and those guys. And, and you see it setting out front in the next couple of weeks, it's coming down because the August event is hogging up my parking lot right now. So it's definitely coming down. So we're, we're fine with, with the permit, just not having the mandatory three-year renewal. But again, got to make sure these comments are addressed from this point forward. <clears throat> and tonight, you need to give some feedback on the sheriff's comment about the increase in law enforcement. And I presume with, with, in the future, if we had another need, then we just have to, then staff would have to initiate the permit to come back to you on an as-needed basis if something came up. But You want to address the deputy <coughs> issue? Uh, yeah, well, the, the deputy issue, when, whenever we have, uh, you know, big events, that I know they're going to be the, like the, the north and south. When we have those, that big event, that's the biggest event of the season up there, I always get four deputies to do that anyway. That's common sense because the place, you know, really it's, you know, it's, it's kind of it's oversold. And, you know, we raised the ticket price hoping that the crowd would stay down because I don't like that many people on the property, you know, but it didn't, uh, it didn't slow the flow of people down. So... I was, that was a, a good problem for one, but I didn't mind paying the deputies. But then when you turn around on those nights that we have an event that we don't have, you know, everybody drives by and always says I have 10,000 people. I wished, you know, when there's 1,700 people there and I've got all these folks to pay and you got the deputy stand there patting their foot with four of them, it gets a little strong. You know, it's like just for instance, my, you know, the carnival that we just done, that's the biggest, that's, that's the biggest event that we do on the property. We run about, you know, 11,000 people through the turnstiles there. But we're working on $10 a car load when we're doing it. It's not by the ticket. And, you know, and I have four deputies there. The deputies for that, you know, for the little fair that we've done. And the only reason I'm rattling on about this is, is because I wish that I had some help with it. And everybody, you know, they don't know the books, but we know for a fact we've done it long enough now. And I always griped about that is the coolest looking event, but we don't make nothing off of it. And we honestly don't. The broker walked out of there with about close to $8,000. He was the smartest one out of everybody there. When we got said and done with that, you know, the deputies were standing there to collect their $2,774 uh, is what I paid in deputies. And, and that's cool because we have to have them. But that, that event really is, pretty, is a pretty calm event. You know, Friday nights, yep, it's, we got a good crowd Saturday night. Absolutely. And that's why I wish that we could use in some reason, you know, it's $25 an hour. doesn't sound like a lot, but when you start spreading all the funds out, we took in, we grossed $18,826 at the fair. My expenses were $25,878. So that put us in the red for that event for $7,552. Mr. Cadwell, Boardwalk Attractions, he walked out with $8,000 profit and he drove up in his pickup truck and he counted the money and he handed me my little cut and he drove off so that was good for the, those guys but it wasn't good for me you know and it's just that if I had a little help on some of the in-kind services when we're doing stuff that really the whole community loves it really would be a help in hand you know if Susan and I don't know how all of that goes you know what I mean but if, if they would if they would pitch in and, and kind of rotate those guys around and help out at those special events like that. I don't have a problem having four deputies there when they're needed. And, um, and, and to me, they're, they're needed there for two big events of the year. That's the North and South and for the fair. You know, we've got a lot of people there, and that's mainly the family, the kids that come out for that fair. And, and I'm, I'm good with that, but I just wish that somewhere in there, if somebody comes up with some idea, 
you know, let's pull together and think about the, you know, the biggest event that looks the biggest up there that there's not, it's just, it's not fair. It's, you know, it's thank God I have two home runs a season up there because I can take a whipping, you know, on those. But, you know, it sure would be a, sure would be a hand for us because, you know, once you go rattling down through the list of, you know, we've got deputies that rent lights and, uh, you know, we've got all the dirt work that we do and the fuel that we burn and radio spots and, Porta potties, you know, we are we talking about porta potties? I get 20 houses. They're forty dollars a house. I have to have them serviced every every event, every day up there. So it's a hundred and sixty dollar fee every day to do that. So I got twelve hundred dollars in porta potty. I got seventy one dollars a ton in trash for cleaning up. I got to pay the people to clean the trash up. So I got eleven hundred dollars in trash fee. You know, there's a. It's the twenty seven hundred for the deputies. That was for four. Yes, that was for four. Yep, it was four deputies. It was uh, yeah, it was twenty-seven hundred and seventy-four dollars. And um, and, and let, let me tell you, I'm not trying to shortcut anything because we want safety as much as anybody. But I'm going to tell you right now, I've got fourteen radios and I've got fourteen people on radios, and we have six of our security guys that you know we don't want to take the law into our own hands. But I'm going to tell you right now, buddy, we can get it done quick when we need to shut somebody down, and that's. And, and these guys, you know, it's better if we have the deputies, if they're going to be there. You know when I really love those guys is when it comes time to close and it's at night. I wish they would sit in their cars and turn the lights on out in the parking lot because that's when they want to spin a wheel. They want to ring a donut. We can keep them calm down and they'll think twice if anybody's drinking and driving because that's I hate to see somebody pulled from my event because I feel like it's a scorecard for me that there's a you know another DUI or there's another arrest and all of that so and I always ask the deputies how, how many people did you get what happened you know and it's surprisingly very little you know what I mean it, it's it's really very little but um, you know not to keep rattling on we we can talk about you know the the deputy thing I mean there's nothing to, that I can say about it I mean if it's required we just yeah, have to do let, it I, I let just me, let me add this what would and I'll defer to Mr. Woody. What about de depending on the size of the event to coordinate the number of the deputies? If it's a smaller event, two deputies, larger event, four deputies. Kevin, you're a, a deputy. Yeah, um, I know in the past, and, and, and I'm speaking, I guess, through the sheriff's program, I know the, the amount of fights and all that stuff has probably went down considerably, if I'm not mistaken, from when you first you know, started having your events. I remember that was the... Uh, the big thing, you know, in the evening times, you know, the families, some of the families would leave and then the, uh, you know, the, the alcohol that had been going on all day, then right. which led to fights. I mean, we used to have a, a lot of fights there. Yeah. And, and, and really, and that's, that's, that's the after hour <clears throat> that I hated. I'm going to tell you right now, I try to run them off and tell them to get down there because I don't want nobody to leave drinking. But the one side is the rowdy side and I don't, you know, we don't, we don't want to promote any of that, but that if we'd done anything, if I was going to have four deputies there, I would rather have two in the beginning because at the beginning of the show, I, the first three or four hours, man, I mean, there, there is there's nothing. You can catch butterflies out there. But now after the mud bog is done and you have that, you know, that 500 people that stay back, that's when we need a little law and order, I think. You know what I mean? So if we'd done a transition that we, we start off with two and then we have two that stays over for three more hours you know if the deputies are getting too much time I, I mean I don't know I just know that they sure don't like to be paired you know singled out on each side you know and, and I agree with that you know that if if they're on the west side then both of them needs to be on the west side if something going on the east side that's that's probably really the biggest you know issue that we would have and usually everything is happening on the east side at night but I don't know I don't want to sit up here and argue about it I just I just want to comment about it, you know. Sir. Is, it, is there a way that Dennis can work with the sheriff and the deputies to where, where it's not set in stone that he's locked into four deputies that, hey, this is what I'm expecting. Maybe we can have flexible hours or whatever. Um, I think it's great that you're hiring Curry Tech deputies with some side money for their families. But is this something that we don't have to set in stone that he has four deputies at everything? But with a commitment from Dennis that he will work with the sheriff's department to maybe improve or do whatever. She's not here. You're here. You're here. I'm just looking for a little flexibility for him. 
Well, if I could make another comment, here's here's how, like, you know, some of the events we have up there, there's 1,700 people, 1,700, 2,000 people. That's, that's nothing because I'm going to tell you right now, there's 1,800 of those people that are going to leave with their families and they're going home. And that's not that many people. And we've always done it with two deputies. I mean, I've had, you know, except for the Battle of the North and South, you know, we had, you know, 7,000 people on the property up there. And we've done it with four deputies up there then. So what I was thinking was is, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we kick the gates open. We have all four deputies there. But by the time we collect three quarters of the gate, we know what we've got. You know, we get, I get called on the radio and we want to know if we're going into overflow parking. You don't go into overflow parking, buddy. We ain't doing that good. And, you know, and if we, if we got four deputies there that we're paying, if we could just say, okay, you two guys have got to be relieved, we got, you know, if we had an option like that, you know, on the, on the dimmer nights, but if it's good, we, we're good, man. I, I, you know, they deserve it and, and we'll pay them. I'm just looking for flexibility so he's not locked in. All right. Well, I know, I, I know, I mean, just, you know, by, like you said, I'm, you know, I work night shift, but I know that there's plenty of times I typically work on the north of the county, but the, uh, there's plenty of times when the guy that's working the middle south of the county, which his facility's at, get sometimes, you know, it, it's happened before where they've had to get towed in or pulled in there to something that, you know, has happened. It's, it's not typically for a long period of time, but it might be something, and then somebody takes a ride to, to our facility, you know, for something that's happened there. Right. Well, that's sure. Yes, sir. I like what Dennis first suggested uh, as the – as the, I mean, there's dynamics to every event, I'm sure. Right. And just as you said, when people first come there, no problems, no this, no that. As you get later in the evening, well, then that maybe that would be an option. I, I, I think I, it I depends like on his events, too, because, like, he's, I mean, you know, like your carnival and some of that stuff. Right. For the, the north versus south, I mean, it looks like everybody from Curry Tech County is there in the parking lot. Yeah. It's, it was pretty busy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Not necessarily about this. I, I just got one for Dennis. I know you are up front and foremost about safety. I know that. Right. I've never been to an event there. Just curious. I, I was watching on the internet the truck that you built, the King Sling. Yeah. I, I seen that on a video one night, and it rolled pretty bad. And right. I mean, it, that truck was getting it. What kind of safety barriers do you have, Dennis, to ensure there's safety with the with the people that you are bringing there to, to watch it and to make sure something don't get out of that darn track and get in those stands. Right. There is, we, we have safety barriers that are required through the, um, <clears throat> through the insurance uh, people. Mm -hmm. And they come out and inspect it. They came from Indiana gotcha. because I was first uh, insured through, um, <coughs> through um, the, uh, a motorsports group. And what, what they've done mm -hmm. is I have to have a positive concrete barrier or guardrail then I have to have a 30-foot crowd control fence 30 foot from those barriers. So in the requirements that they really gave me to go by and when I built King Sling and as fast as it goes and as hard as it wrecks, I honestly regrouped and redone my track. So my requirements were I could run right beside that wall and I was good, you know, but that wasn't really good enough for us for as hard and as fast and as high as we were going. So when I've redone the track, I actually have, I've got a 30 foot before the comp positive barrier and a 30 foot after. So it's pretty safe and, you know, and it really, it looks scary. I'm going to tell you that right now. And there's a, there's a lot of times that, uh, you know, whenever that, and I call it the kill zone, when I'm going to the kill zone, I'm always doing it at the south end of the track. That's, that's where, you know, the tripping and the flipping and all that stuff goes on when I'm powering away from everybody in the shutdown area, I have a 300 foot area down there. It's kind of a crash zone that I plan to crash in, you know. So. I know you've thought a lot about it. And, <laughs> yeah. and I know it'd be your worst nightmare and it would ours as well. For <laughs> right, exactly. There. You, you've seen it in, in drag racing and it's not another, even though everything is designed to keep yeah. that from, even in NASCAR, it's designed right. to keep it from happening. Sooner or later, sometime. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you right now, and none of it's foolproof, but let me tell you what I do have. I have a $1,650 transmitter in my vehicle. I understand. And they shut this thing down, and I've got two guys on the track, officials, watching me. So if it looks like I'm getting too stupid, they'll just shut me right off. One more. Yes, sir. Commissioner Allen talks about safety. We've got deputies. What, what, what do you do as far as EMS being on site? We have EMS there. I mean, are there county? Yeah, yes, we pay them. I think it's about $450, you know, every event. 
we cannot run our vehicles. Like if they have to leave the track, then we have to shut the show down. Okay. And that, that's, that's never happened. Usually somebody, if we had to transport anybody out, it was, um, you know, they would send somebody else in, you know, and um, I don't, any, nobody's never got hurt on the track except for my son, you know, Ryan, and we just carried him in to check him just for safety. <clears throat> All right, anything else? No, I'm just, thank you, Ben. I was just curious. So. This is for action tonight, so there's not a public hearing. We just. Yes, sir. Oh, wait a minute. You got to be sworn before you can speak. Perfect. You swear to tell the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Thank you. Please state your name. And My name is Deputy Mark Chapel with the Currituck County Sheriff's Office. Now, I'm in charge of all the off-duty assignments in Currituck. In fact, when Dennis needs deputies, he calls me. And what you're talking about is the two deputies, the, the four deputies. This year at the carnival, yes, he does get four deputies, but on two nights we sent two of them home. I got phone calls saying they're sending me home. I said, you're contracted, we'll go ahead and go. It was a slow night. They sent those two deputies home. But what I'm hearing from my deputies when I have them at an event is they're on one side and a fight breaks out on the other side <clears throat> they have to fight through the entire crowd to get to the other side that's where it becomes a safety issue we're not going to have one deputy separate from another deputy because you never want a deputy by himself in a crowd of over a thousand if he's on one side by himself and his backups on the other side it's going to take a while to get there that's one thing we don't want normally the the, the ratio is one deputy per 500 people you're talking over a thousand people. We're not asking for six deputies. We would just like to have two deputies there so we have two on one side, two on the other side. Now, when it comes to letting a deputy go, like you said, at the end of the night when they're moving out, if it's a, a calm night and all he needs is people to sit in the, in the um, parking lot to, to watch the parking lot so nobody's spinning out so we're not having anybody leaving impaired, I can see allowing the deputies to leave, but when you're asking deputies to leave, then you're taking away that safety issue. Now you're taking away what side of the, of the um, event doesn't have a deputy. And I hear my guys, I, the first thing I ask them on Monday after an event was, how was the event? And they give me a lowdown. And it's sometimes <coughs> we're, we're, we're sitting there saying, should have had four deputies out there at that event. North and South, absolutely. 7,000 yeah. people, it's a huge event. Usually he starts with two deputies, and right now I only have two deputies signed up for that event. But what happens is Don will call me and ask me to put two more deputies on that event. But every event, you, you, you're, you're gauging of how many people are going to be there. And I just think that you do need the extra two deputies there to help with the enforcement. I know, um, in fact, I think he's called before the deputies, they were on the other side and somebody's peeling donuts and he's, he's yelling for a deputy to get over there and it takes them 10 minutes, 15 minutes to get over there because they gotta get through the crowd. And I think you do have them doing special duties during the event where they're going when they're getting the money out and, and, right. and, and taking them to the front gate. So that is something that we, we really like you to think about when you make your decision. I, I understand it's a lot of money and, and we could, if we could get by with two, we would, but I really believe you need to have the four deputies at an event. Thank you, All right, sir. that's sold right there. We don't even argue about it no more. Four deputies, we're good. Okay. We got it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Idlett. No, that, that, I was just going to make a suggestion, but they've already settled it. It's great. So. Okay. <laughs> That'll work. I'm good with that. It's not worth it. You know what I mean? We, you're exactly right because just as soon as I try to fight for two deputies, something's going to go wrong, and then somebody's going to say, I told you so. So you got it, buddy. You're in there, four of you. And it won't be your wife this time. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Dennis, right. Dennis I had prevention. We're for pine to cure. <laughs> right on. All right, we need a motion from the board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve with all the staff findings and the requirements. We have a motion. Do we have second, a second that motion. A motion and a second. Any further comments or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And that is with the permit not having to come back in three years, Mr. Woody? If that was the intent of the motion, yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you all very much. I'd like to make a comment, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I 
Dennis, I really and truly would like to see 10,000 there for all your events. And we then could have eight deputies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'd be a good problem. All we need is to take it to the next level is $500,000. I need grandstands, and then I can bring monster trucks. I cannot put monster trucks on the property until I have elevated grandstands. And all I need is 500000 so let's get to getting. All right. Economic development. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. All right. Thank you all. Item B, public hearing and action, PB 1305 Patsway, request zoning and abandoned right-of-way, Patsway to general business located in Barco Tax Map 60, parcel 55D Crawford Township. Anyone wishing to speak in favor or in opposition to this needs to come forward and be sworn. Public hearing and action, no, there is no special use permit. Forget everything I said about coming forward and being sworn. We're just going to have public hearing and action. Okay. Mr. Woody. Um, I'll be <clears throat> very brief on this. Pat's Way was a right way that was created uh, as part of a subdivision behind the credit union in Barco, if you know where that is. Um, 5E Drive has been improved and can adequately serve that subdivision. There are two lots in the subdivision that once they receive building permits, there'll be a little additional road work that needs to be done, but that's the case either way. Uh, bottom line is, is that with 5E Drive serving that purpose, there was no longer a need to have Pat's Way. So the owner of the lot, Mr. Ennis, uh, did a recombination plat and closed that right of way. And so now you see his lot, it's basically a flag lot. He still accesses the lot from Carrotoke Highway. Um, what we discovered is, what we know is that we don't zone our right of way. So the roads have no zoning designation. So when, when that right of way was closed, it left a little strip of land that had no zoning on it. Uh, so staff contacted Mr. Ennis and asked him what he would like it to be zoned. He said GB, which seems entirely appropriate because it's surrounded by GB. Um, and that's why we're here tonight, to ask the Board of Commissioners to establish GB zoning on the flagpole portion of his lot. And we recommend approval. Anyone have any questions? Just just one. I, I know it's <clears throat> way past, but uh, there was no problem with closing it right away and all from anyone else. Does anyone else uh, live back? on that access i'm not aware of a problem and and the same level of access was maintained through the right-of-way closure so no issues okay. there just curious all right i'll open the public hearing i had no one signed up to speak is there anyone who wishes to speak seeing none i'll close the public hearing and ask the board for a motion mr chairman a motion for approval I have a motion for approval second, second. any further discussion Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. New business board appointments. Appointments to Library Board of Trustees. As I look at this, Ms. Gilbert, it appears that everyone, how in the world did everyone get non-staggered terms? I know you weren't the clerk at the time, but we need to stagger these terms somehow. Seven. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Eight. How did we get eight on Let me count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, I would certainly. Is, is everyone up for appointment? Except for Miss Cheat. I would certainly recommend that at their next meeting they draw straws to see whose term is what length in order to get staggered terms. I just appointed Ms. Haskell a year ago. Ms. Haskell? For an unexpired term, so <coughs> she's well, maybe finished that's what that term, now mm -hmm. it's time to... I just mm -hmm. reappointed uh, Colleen mm -hmm. Uh It's showing <laughs> Colleen Umflett. It's the same thing. She's, she's filling a, an expired term, so both of them came in midway, but, but both of them can be reappointed. Okay, and then Kevin has Joanne or Joan, or I'm not sure how, is that Joanne? <coughs> Marion has Lisa Rose, Paul Martin has George Gregory, and I have Rhonda Cheek who has been appointed. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to reappoint Shelly Haskell. Okay, uh, Mr. Griggs, do you have someone? No, I'm looking at this. My appointment is the only one that has to be replaced, but I would request that it be 
table. I'm still in the process of determining okay. a replacement. Mr. Patry, would you like to reappoint yours? Yes. Uh, Mr. McCord? Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, reappoint Mr. Bella. Ms. Gilbert? I'd like to reappoint Ms. Rose. And Mr. Martin? Yes, I would like to reappoint. Okay, all those in favor of reappointing the... Uh, uh, Kevin, yours wasn't... Mine wasn't available? No, Mr. Dom, that wasn't yours, so it was... It's David's. I mean, yeah, it's David's. Yeah, he wanted to table his. Yeah. But who did you reappoint? Mr. Mr. Bello. Oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood you. Excuse me. Yeah, everybody's getting reappointed except Mr. Dom, who's not eligible for reappointment. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. And I don't know if the county manager or the attorney or the clerk, we need to get those terms staggered mm -hmm. through some yes, sir. way at the next meeting. Okay, next is game commission. We have Mr. McCord has an appointment, Ms. Gilbert has an appointment, and I have an appointment. Mr. Chairman, I need to have mine um, postponed until our next meeting. Okay, Mr. McCord. Uh, I'd like to appoint uh, Lewis Davis. <clears throat> okay, Lewis Davis, and I'm going to continue mine until the next. So the only one for appointment is Lewis Davis. All those in Pam favor? Chandler Sawyer. To be it reappointed. Okay, I'm sorry. Lewis Davis, new appointment. Chandler Sawyer, reappointment. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I think the next one is appointment to the Albemarle Rural Transportation Planning Organization, RPO. I think Mr. Martin has decided he is uh, stretched out enough, so this is a commissioner who would be appointed to this. You'd be dealing with the transportation board and making helping uh, carry the county's policy forward on roads and transportation correct mr scanlon yes sir they meet uh, during the day and we meet i think it's not necessarily the 19th month. It, well we, yeah, we meet uh wednesday yes uh, it, uh, it's not necessarily monthly meetings but i think we meet more often than quarterly but it is generally a 11 o'clock 12 o'clock uh, meeting Where do you meet? uh, generally at the albemarle commission could i explain uh, the reason that i stepped down I presently serve on four different boards, and uh, because of the uh, State Ethics Commission and that law, you are required to uh, take uh, the ethics training uh, for this board and to remain on it. And since I already take it two other times, you cannot substitute. Uh, I think the uh, state has gone overboard with this, and uh, I fill out a uh, financial report and everything like that. But uh, it gets to be kind of cumbersome when you have to take and set through the same training three times over the course of a year. And uh, so I decided to step down, and uh, that's why uh, we need uh, someone else. It's a very, very important uh, it decides what roads are going to be built uh, in our region in northeast North Carolina. It has a uh, real responsibility to uh, the region, let alone uh, our own county. Thanks. So I would urge someone who has the time to uh, please pick up on it. Do we have any volunteers? We do. Um, then I motion that Let's Commissioner Petrie second. take that position. Second that All in favor, aye. 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 Go okay. <laughs> Item four is appointment to Board of Adjustments. I believe that's Mr. Idlitz. Yes. Uh, my <clears throat> person who served uh, recently had resigned because of job conflicts and uh, had to go to a different area. So I would like to appoint Ms. Donna McLeod from Knights Island. Second that motion. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item is consent agenda. Make a motion to approve as um, noted. We have a motion for approval. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Like sign. Next is commissioner's report. Mr. Idley. A uh, couple things. Um, met uh, with the 
uh, regional uh, solid waste authority, Mr. Scanlon and myself did the other day. Had a very good meeting. Uh, had it here in Currituck, I think, for first, did we not? Yes, sir. And uh, uh, so there was uh, uh, some items of, of interest that, uh, are, that still are moving along. <coughs> Um, some, one of them is a deal for recycling, and it looks like the Currituck might make out pretty well with uh, the fees that uh, are willing to go for recycling. Each county will be responsible to negotiate their own deal. <clears throat> they couldn't get it together where everyone could agree on one particular thing because of different uh, areas and that type of stuff. But anyhow, <laughs> second thing, uh, for anyone who is interested, the Knott Island Ruiton Club will be having their annual peach <clears throat> festival this weekend uh, as part of that they're having a big car show and would like for anyone to attend that uh, would uh, that could so and last but not least uh, I want to give a uh, high compliment to the Crover Beach Volunteer Fire Department on Sunday morning they had uh, at about 4 15 or so in the morning they were called to a house <clears throat> fire when they arrived on the scene, there were two two houses involved. Uh, fire chief told me that the first unit that the had, where the fire had started uh, had already burned the side out, and he could see it completely inside the house. The second fire had already had fire in the third story area. They made a decision that is, I think, a very appropriate and right decision to protect the immediate exposures to the south. They did. That house sat about 50 feet away, and that house is standing beautifully today. The vinyl on the side and it's not even melted. So uh, kudos goes to that organization. When I was there, everything was being run very professionally. They had their stuff together and never a problem with water. Tankers were working great, and so I'm very proud of them. They've done a good job. So with that being said, I'll hush. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Patry? Ms. Gilbert? Um, I just want to report on the Moyock Small Area Plan. We met on the 10th and had a public meeting. Um, had a very good turnout and some very good information shared um, from the public. I just want to encourage um, folks to please continue to attend these public meetings. Um, if you participate in any of the surveys, this is important because this is what's going to drive the future of the Small Area Plan, and this is the first one that's um, been done in the North into the county so it's it's very important that we have your input secondly I'd like to um, thank all the volunteers that came out on Saturday for the Animal Assistance League in the car show we had a great turnout um, I just that that event could have not happened without the volunteers so I just want to encourage people that if you have the opportunity to volunteer with something in the county to to do so because that's what's going to help um, progress thank you thank you mr. McCord no comment. Nothing to report. Mr. Griggs. Nothing for tonight. Thank you. Mr. Martin. I'd just like to say uh, thank you to uh, 94.5 of uh, radio and for uh, Channel 3 News and their support of the animal shelter where we lost generators and with their kind support. And uh, uh, the generators uh, are going to be replaced. They've uh, made donations over $5,000 <coughs> Lowe's. Uh, are offering the replacement generators for half price. Thank you, say sir. thank you to those businessmen for stepping up. Yes, sir. I missed something. Yes, sir. I would be remiss if I did not also recognize and thank the uh, the uh, Duck Volunteer Fire Department and as also the Corrala Volunteer Fire Department, who also responded and played a very big role in in the suppression of the fires there. So, I just wanted to make sure I covered everybody. Yes, sir. I understand. You always forget somebody. I did. I'm sorry. That. I have a couple of things I want to <coughs> clarify tonight before the manager gives his report. At our last commissioner's meeting, it was stated that the Board of Commissioners needed to have public hearings before we adopted the budget. I would just like for the record to, to clarify that the Board of Commissioners held two all-day public work sessions to consider the budget this year. We held a public disclosure of the budget at the meeting before it was adopted which was available for comment and we held a public hearing and adoption of the budget there was four opportunities before the budget was adopted for anyone in this county to participate 
I will tell you during the budget work sessions, we had one person who came for half a day. That is all the participation there was in the budget process. So when uh, someone states that the process was not open, that is erroneous from the fact they obviously didn't read the public notice or whatever, but it was done in the public and there was four uh, sessions public. The other thing is I read in the paper about the nonprofits being cited for their signs in the right of way. I'd like to clarify one thing. The Curry Tuck County Board of Commissioners did not change one thing about the sign ordinance that had anything to do with the right of way. The signs were illegal in the right of way before the county adopted the new sign ordinance and they're illegal now in the right of way. The difference is they're being reported as in the right of way. Previously, the county was not riding around looking for nonprofits to harass and take their signs and cite them. But when staff receives complaints from citizens stating that they are in violation, the staff has a oath and a duty to enforce the ordinance. So I just want to clarify that the county did not change anything in the ordinance that resulted in any of the nonprofits getting cited. It was the fact that citizens complained about the nonprofit signs, not the county going out looking for them. And then lastly, um, read an article in the uh, Daily Advance about all the new proposed developments coming into the Moyoc area. And there was a comment about the wastewater system possibly needing to be expanded in the near future. I would like for staff to provide the Board of Commissioners an update as to the status of the wastewater system in Moyoc because it's obviously been a success if we're at the point of needing to expand it. Amen. And it the, opened in November. And, and while we're speaking of wastewater, the county is in possession and ownership of the wastewater system in the Grandy area that serves Walnut Island and Waterside Villages. And the county is now in possession of that. At some point in the near future, I would like a work session where we discuss the possibility of interested parties who may want to expand businesses or create businesses. What would it take for the county to be able to expand that system to the point where businesses could locate? Lower Curry Tuck County is in a funk compared to the northern portion of the county. Moyoc has held steady. It's kept right on building houses and things have been going on. The citizens in Lower Curry Tuck County, which we all represent, um, have, are also wanting to know what can happen to help Lower Curry Tuck. I don't know that the government can do anything to make people invest in Lower Curry Tuck except infrastructure, so I would like for us to look at that. And with that, Mr. <coughs> Scanlon? Nothing tonight, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, don't want to be t talking out of school, but as far as infrastructure goes, I think, if I may say this, and you can squint or wink or whatever. It's uh, too late after you said it. <laughs> uh, natural <laughs> gas is, is looking to come into Grandy. Uh, south, south, to, to expand in Grandy. To expand into yeah, Grandy, the, because it stops yes. at Augusta now, and they're going to go to uh, Station 5 fire department and they're looking to go down into <clears throat> Grandy which is good well it goes all the way through Grandy mm -hmm. it goes around it. it goes to Augusta make a right at Augusta goes all the way around behind the Carolina Club and back up Fisher Landing Road he, he, speak, he is speaking of uh, there, there is a, a a line that goes right down 158 mm -hmm. what they're talking about now is actually t looking to expand in to the uh, subdivision distribution in the subdivision yeah. Yeah. Just the the yes. distribution lines because there is a main line that goes right down 158 well, all the way all to the, the way bridge. To Derrick County. Goes to Derrick. Yes, it goes to Derrick yeah. County, yes. Yeah. Anybody along 158 can connect. I know. Uh, no, I'm saying they, it goes to Augusta, goes down in front of Ben Woody's house, and comes back up down Grandy Road to Fisher Landing and take a left and comes down in front of BJ. Okay, Ben Woody. Okay. <laughs> I don't believe Augusta. 
Well, he just, he just wanted to he wanted to thank Butch for telling everybody where he lives. There's a billboard in Grandy now with his phone number. So, I, just for clarification, you're telling me the the there at Augusta it go and it does not continue down 158. Nope. It, it does continue down 158. It goes all the way down to the bridge. It goes under the under the sound over to Dare County. It goes down 158. It goes, it goes, right, through, 158, it goes right to the heart to. of Grandy. Now, what I think he's talking about is there is an effort now to expand and pick customers customers up off of that into these areas he's referring to. But there is a main line that goes right down 158 all the way to the bridge. Point of clarification: They don't agree with you. Okay. Because the fire station is paying money to have the gas line run to from the corner of Augusta over to the fire station. Augusta, where the Carolina Club is? Augusta, right there where the surf shop is, just past uh, Grandy Farmers Market. It makes a right turn there. <coughs> Well, that's news to me because I was on the board that put the natural gas line in, and we voted on it. It was supposed to go right down 158, so we'll let the manager clarify that at our next meeting. All right. Anything else? With that, we motion have a motion. To adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, may stay.